During the Great Roman Civil War, the first major clash between Julius Caesar and Pompey was the Siege of Dyrrhachium, taking place from March to May 48 BC. The war had erupted with Caesar's lightning-fast advance through the Italian peninsula, compelling Pompey and the Senate to flee to Greece. In Greece, Pompey regrouped, amassing a formidable army consisting of nine full-strength legions under his direct command, supplemented by two veteran legions from Syria. However, his soldiers lacked the battle-hardened experience of Caesar's veterans, many of whom had fought alongside him in Gaul. Before I proceed, I have a humble request to you, I would greatly appreciate if you could support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you, now, let's continue. Caesar, on the other hand, had 12 legions in Italy, though they were under strength. Despite this, he was confident in their ability to win pitched battles against Pompey's forces. The challenge for Caesar lay in Pompey's control of the Adriatic Sea, which made sailing from Brundisium to Greece risky. Meanwhile, the land route through Illyria was time-consuming. Caesar also faced a shortage of shipping, and on January 4, 48 BC, he set sail with seven legions, leaving behind slaves and non-essential baggage. Skillfully evading Pompey's fleets, he landed south of the Acroceraunian Mountains. However, Pompey's admiral, L. Bibulus, arrived too late to intercept Caesar but managed to capture and burn 30 of Caesar's ships with their crews on board. He committed another such act when a single ship fell into his hands. Caesar, after landing, sent a captured supporter of Pompey to request a peace conference. Subsequently, he advanced northward, capturing important ports on the Epirus coast, leaving Dyrrhachium in Pompey's hands. Pompey received an alert from Caesar's messenger and moved his troops swiftly to block Caesar's northern route, thereby retaining control of Dyrrhachium. At this juncture, Pompey held the advantage with access to supplies via the sea and commanding a larger army. However, he was hesitant to risk a battle, even though Caesar might receive reinforcements. The situation remained at a standstill until late February, when Mark Antony finally managed to reach the sea with four legions, some slingers, and 800 cavalry. His fleet sailed past both Caesar at Apollonia and Pompey at Dyrrhachium, eventually landing at Nymphium. Now bolstered with 11 legions, Caesar found himself split in two by Pompey's forces. Pompey attempted an ambush on Antony but was foiled by Caesar's local supporters who tipped Antony off. Instead of engaging both armies simultaneously, Pompey retreated to Asparagium, within the territory of Dyrrhachium. Caesar followed suit and offered battle, but Pompey refused once again, prompting Caesar to attempt a maneuver to reach Dyrrhachium through a roundabout route, hoping to evade Pompey's awareness. The plan almost succeeded, with Caesar's troops arriving outside Dyrrhachium while Pompey remained some distance away. However, Pompey managed to establish a defensive position on higher ground at Petra, a nearby anchorage south of Dyrrhachium. This prevented Caesar from directly besieging Dyrrhachium and forced him to confront Pompey's main army. Both commanders then initiated the construction of extensive field fortifications, leading to a 15-mile long line enclosing a large coastal area. Pompey's control of the sea necessitated Caesar to build a double line of fortifications to guard against any potential amphibious assault. The supply situation began to favor Pompey initially, but as the siege prolonged, his horses suffered from a lack of fodder. After about six weeks of siege, Pompey made a daring attempt to break through Caesar's lines. The first attempt was thwarted, but the second attack, known as the Battle of Dyrrhachium, exploited information from Gallic deserters who revealed a vulnerability in Caesar's southern line. Within Caesar's camp, there were two Gallic leaders who had been accused of misappropriating their soldiers' pay. Following a private reprimand from Caesar, 
they defected to join Pompey's side. In their newfound allegiance, they provided Pompey with vital intelligence regarding Caesar's defenses, specifically pointing out a vulnerable area at the southern end of his fortifications, which happened to be the farthest point from Caesar's main camp situated at the northern end. At this vulnerable southern end, Caesar had constructed double lines of fortifications. Facing north, there stood a ten-foot-high rampart, while a smaller rampart faced south, leaving a 600-foot gap between the two. The purpose of the southern rampart was to guard against any potential amphibious assault from Pompey's forces. Although Caesar had intended to build a crosswall between the two camps, it had not been completed yet. Lentulus Marcellinus, in charge of the southern end of the line, was in poor health, leading to the dispatch of Fulvius Costumus to assist him. Mark Antony followed in the line of command. Pompey devised a plan to exploit this weak point in Caesar's defenses. He assembled a formidable force, consisting of 60 cohorts of infantry, equivalent to six full legions, supported by numerous shipborne light infantry and archers. At the break of dawn, Pompey's attack commenced. Legions launched a frontal assault on Caesar's inner wall, while the lightly armed troops and archers attacked from the sea. Pompey's forces landed between the two walls, mounting rear attacks on both of Caesar's lines. The sudden onslaught caused panic, and Marcellinus was unable to control the situation. During the chaos, some of Caesar's men were crushed as they attempted to flee, and Pompey's troops quickly approached Marcellinus's camp. In the nick of time, Mark Antony intervened with 12 cohorts, halting the Pompeian advance and allowing Caesar to arrive with reinforcements. However, the siege had already been broken, and Pompey's camp was now established on the coast, regaining access to the surrounding countryside. Caesar responded by ordering the construction of a new fortified camp opposite Pompey's new position. Soon, an opportunity for a counterattack arose when Pompey's forces occupied a recently abandoned small camp of Caesar's, which they had expanded before abandoning it again. Caesar led 33 cohorts to attack this position. Pompey's legion was forced to retreat, and a more significant defeat was only averted when some of Caesar's men mistook a wall leading to a nearby river for the outer rampart of the fort. Pompey took advantage of this delay to organize his own counterattack. His troops made a stand at one of the camp gates, forcing Caesar's cavalry to flee. Witnessing the retreat of the cavalry, Caesar's right wing turned back, leading to some chaos as they tried to avoid being trapped. Trampling incidents occurred as men attempted to cross a rampart and ditch. The retreat turned into a rout, and even Caesar could not fully prevent it. Thankfully, some of Caesar's men held their ground, defending the gates into the fort, which hindered Pompey from fully exploiting this unexpected victory. Caesar reported a total of 960 rank and file casualties in the fighting, which included four Roman knights and 32 military tribunes and centurions. The battle marked a significant episode in the ongoing conflict between Caesar and Pompey, shaping the course of the Great Roman Civil War. That's all for today. See you in the next episode of the Roman Civil War. Hope you liked this video and if you did, please like, share and comment what you liked the most in this episode. Thanks for watching and have a great day ahead.